Mom, I can't keep living like this. Ethan and his mom barely let me eat. Then, a sudden SOS call came from my once happy daughter, Ileana. Ileana, come back home. I instinctively shouted. Ileana had become worryingly thin. I won't forgive Ethan and his mother. I resolved with determination. Let me introduce myself. I'm Jana, a 50-year-old housewife. My husband, James, is 52 and works for a company. Our daughter is turning 26. After graduating from college, she landed a job at a major corporation and started living alone. James and I were enjoying our life as a couple after Ileana moved out. Although successful in her job, Ileana was shy around men and hesitant in relationships. So, when she got a boyfriend, James and I were overjoyed. James kept urging Ileana to bring him over, asking, What's he like? Bring him home sometime. I cautioned James, Honey, don't push her. She'll introduce him when she's ready. Let's wait patiently. Ileana just smiled. Soon, Ileana said she'd bring Ethan over. She playfully told James, Dad, you kept insisting, so I complained to Ethan. He agreed to come over to meet you, but don't say anything weird to Ethan, okay? James was visibly delighted when Ethan came to greet us. James and I were nervous. However, Ethan's friendly conversation soon eased our tension. Ethan introduced himself to James and me. Hello, I'm Ethan Smith, and I'm seriously dating Eliana with the intention of marrying her. Eliana blushed and said, Marrying me? You're embarrassing me. You said it was just a casual greeting. James happily told Eliana, No. It's great that he's thinking about the future, Ethan. I entrust Eliana to you. Their relationship progressed smoothly with our blessing, and Ethan proposed formally five months later. Seeing a blushing but happy Eliana made both James and me very happy. I heard Ethan worked for a major bank system company. James and I discussed how their future seemed secure as wedding preparations began. Eliana frequently sought advice. One day, Eliana asked me, Hey, Mom, how much is the market price for a wedding ring? Ethan is planning to buy one for about $10,000. Surprised, I replied. For wedding rings, maybe about $2,500 each for the couple. I've heard engagement rings are around $3,500. Ileana seemed a bit uneasy. Right, I thought so too, she said. After asking around and reading magazines, I felt Ethan's sense of money was odd. However, when Ileana said, Ethan insists it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing and wants me to have something nice, I conveniently interpreted it as Ethan wanting to give her a special gift. After some time, the two moved out of their bachelor's residence and into a condominium in New York. The area was very expensive but convenient for commuting. I was a little concerned and said to Ileana, Hey, Ileana. The area you and Ethan live in must be pretty expensive to rent, right? Are you going to be able to afford the monthly payments? She reassured me. Don't worry, Mom. Ethan's working hard and earns a decent salary, too. His job requires living near the bank. Ethan is a systems engineer at a bank-rated systems company. If there is a problem, Ethan needs to rush to the site, even in the middle of the night. That's why the location had to be close to the bank within a short taxi ride. Apparently, Ileana explained, Ethan's company gives a substantial housing allowance, so we're fine. Don't worry, Mom, not fully understanding the company's situation. I had come to accept it as the new normal. Months passed, and I extended an invitation to Ileana for lunch before her wedding. Ileana and I had often enjoyed lunch together in the past. But after her marriage, she frequently declined, citing work commitments or prior plans. James suggested she might be adjusting to her new married life, but it felt like Ileana was avoiding me. Over the phone, Ileana agreed to join me for lunch the next Saturday, saying, Oh, that's when Ethan is on a business trip. Sure, Mom, I can make it. I'll find a place for us. I felt a bit thrilled at the prospect of lunch with my daughter after half a year. When I finally saw Ileana, she looked a bit pale. Concerned, I asked her what was wrong and suggested she rest if she wasn't feeling well. 
Ileana reassured me, saying she was fine, just tired from overtime at work. She thought lunch with me might help her unwind. We enjoyed a good chat for about two hours, just the two of us. About two hours in, Ileana's phone rang. She looked shocked at the display. She told me, Mom, I have to go home already. Ethan's mother is calling. Ileana explained that Ivy was at their place. Surprised, I apologized for keeping her during such a busy time, and Ileana quickly left. Another half year went by, and during this time, something terrible happened to Ileana. I learned about it from a phone call from her. It was a sad day, and James and I were enjoying our day off. While I was making her tea, suddenly my phone rang. The display showed Ileana's name. I quickly answered. Ileana hesitantly started, Mom, it's me. Um, hi. She seemed unable to continue. Sensing something was wrong, I asked her what the matter was. She remained silent for a while, and I patiently waited for her to start talking. Eventually, she said, Mom, I can't live like this anymore. Ethan and his mom barely let me eat. I might not survive if this continues. Shocked, I asked if she was okay, expressing concern about the severity of the situation and suggesting she come back home. Ileana seemed undecided. I firmly told her, if you're feeling unwell, you can just sit around Ellie. Come back home. We'll talk it over when you get here. Ileana responded, really? Can I come back? But I don't have any money. I can't leave. I thought this was strange. Ileana was earning a decent salary. But there was no time for a long discussion. Her situation sounded serious. First, I need to meet with Ileana to see how she is doing, I told myself. I instructed Ileana, take only your valuables with you and leave the house. There is a convenience store near your apartment, right? I will drive there and pick you up. Wait for me there. Sobbing, Ileana agreed. So James and I hurried to the convenience store. When we arrived, Ileana was crouched in the parking lot. When she saw me, she said, Mom, Mom, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done this and broke down in tears. I hugged Ileana and together with James, we helped her into the car. She was terribly thin and almost gray in complexion. What could have happened to her? I was astonished. I held Ileana until she stopped crying. James said to me, She will not be able to come down here. Let's take her home soon and give her a good rest. We need to talk to Ethan. I agreed with James. Yes, right now, letting Ileana rest is our top priority. When we arrived home, Ileana, possibly due to exhaustion, immediately fell asleep on the sofa. After she woke up, I served her some easy-to-eat food. She ate voraciously in front of us. She must have been very hungry. It was shocking to hear her stories about not being allowed to eat and having no money. I asked Ileana, What do you mean you're not allowed to eat? Ileana explained, My salary is lower than Ethan's, so Ethan and his mom, Ivy, keep telling me to save more. Gradually, my food portions were reduced. I asked, Really? But you're making the food, right? Because you're a married couple, and you eat the same food, right? Ileana shook her head, no. For the past six months, Ivy has been cooking Ethan's meals. I'm not even allowed in the kitchen. James asked, Ivy is in your house. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. Does this mean Ivy is staying there all the time? Ileana explained that Ivy had moved in with them about six months ago, and they started living together gradually. Right around the time Ileana and I had lunch, Ivy had an argument with her husband and came to stay with Ethan for just a week. But then Ethan got mad at his father and told Ivy she could stay indefinitely. I was shocked and glanced at James, who seemed to feel the same. Ileana continued, Since then, Ivy has been criticizing my budgeting, saying it's all wrong and that I can't manage money at all. After Ivy criticized the budget, she took control of the household finances. Moreover, Ethan did not oppose Ivy at all and instead joined her in blaming me. Now Ivy is controlling Ethan's and my entire salary. Ileana said Ivy saw Ileana's pay slip and demanded she work more, including overtime. I distinctly remember telling Ileana, 
Your salary is much lower than Ethan's. Leave the housework to me and consider working more. How about doing more overtime? Ethan also chimed in, saying, Yes, that's right. I agree with more overtime. It's nice to have my mom doing the housework. You're lucky, Ileana. Ivy scrutinized Ileana's pay slips, always on the lookout for unnecessary expenses. Eventually, she found something else to criticize, the cafeteria deductions. Ileana's company had a cafeteria, and lunch costs were deducted from her salary. Ivy told Ileana, you're spending too much on lunch. I'll make you a lunchbox from now on. Stop eating at the cafeteria. Ileana's attempts to argue were met with attacks from both Ivy and Ethan. Whenever I try to speak up, Ivy and Ethan gang up on me. It never ends up being a calm discussion. Ileana confided. Her attempts were suppressed by Ivy and Ethan. Now Ethan and Ivy controlled all of Ileana's salary, leaving her with almost no money of her own. When Ileana wanted to go to the hair salon, Ivy called it extravagant and reluctantly gave her money. Ivy also complained about Ileana's makeup being too expensive, telling her to buy cheaper products. Ileana couldn't even buy new clothes, but Ivy never complained about Ethan's spending. Ethan seemed to spend money lavishly. Ileana told me, the other day, Ethan bought a branded watch. He told me that because of his job, he would be treated like an idiot if he didn't wear something decent. Ethan had a reckless way of spending his money. Ileana began to sob as she recalled these painful events. James and I listened in disbelief. Then, Ileana's phone rang. She flinched and turned pale. I instinctively answered the phone for her. It was Ivy. Isn't this Ileana's phone? Why is Johnny answering? Ivy asked. I told Ivy, Hello, it's been a while. Ileana is not feeling well. I can talk to you on her behalf. Ivy said, Is that so? Well, all right. Could you tell Liliana to come back home soon? I replied, Unfortunately, I can't do that. Ileana is unwell. She'll stay here until she recovers. Ivy retorted, You're coddling her too much. As a mother, you should educate Ileana properly. She can't manage a budget or do household chores. It's always one problem after another. Struggling to find the right words, I remained silent. Then, Ivy changed the topic, asking, So, Ileana will be commuting to work from your home. I replied, Yes, considering her health, we'll need to discuss this with her company. But for now, she'll be commuting from here. Ivy then said, Please tell Ileana to return as soon as she's well. I responded, Excuse me, Ivy, but I think it's necessary for us including Ethan, to have a discussion about the future living arrangements. Ivy snorted and said, Fine, we can talk any time, before hanging up. I couldn't understand why Ivy was so confident, but at least Ileana was safe for now. We needed to focus on her health and feelings and plan our next steps. That night, after Ileana went to sleep, James and I discussed the situation. The next day, Ileana was examined at a hospital. As expected, she was underweight and not sleeping well. After talking with her, we decided she should take a leave of absence from work. She enjoyed my cooking, saying it was delicious. I asked her, What were you eating while living with Ethan? What kind of meals did Ivy prepare for you? Then Ileana said, My mother-in-law only cooks for Ethan and herself. I always had bread ends from a local bakery. They sell bread ends very cheaply. That's what I used to eat. I was shocked. Ileana had been deprived of proper meals while Ivy and Ethan ate normally, just bread ends. Since when? What about your lunchbox? Didn't Ivy prepare that too? I asked. Ileana explained. I should have been stopped from eating at the company cafeteria by Ivy since three months ago. My lunchbox was just bread ends in a container. I was embarrassed, so I ate secretly in the break room when no one was around. Ileana said Ivy would taunt her about not earning as much as Ethan, saying with her salary, bread ends were all she deserved. She had been living on just bread ends for three months. I was shocked, and James, who heard everything, couldn't hide his surprise. Ileana, 
tired from talking, lay down to rest. James told me, this is serious, strange. We need to investigate further if Ethan or Ivy calls again. By that time, I'll gather more information. I told James, yes, I think this is going too far. Then James and I began looking into Eliana's circumstances. I started by calling her work colleague who said recently Eliana had been doing a lot of overtime and looked pale. She often declined after work drinks, saying she couldn't go because of her husband and mother-in-law. James also talked to Eliana's boss. Eliana's boss mentioned, I've been concerned about Eliana lately because she's been doing too much overtime. She seemed desperate to work. Eliana's boss commented, Eliana is so conscientious. Maybe she's been pushing herself too hard. I hope she recovers soon and comes back to us. Thanks to her boss's initiative, Ileana was granted the sickness allowance by her company. The allowance was two-thirds of her salary, but we were grateful to receive it. We decided to have the sickness allowance paid into a different account from her usual salary account. Two weeks after Ileana returned home, Ethan called. He insisted Ileana should be well by now. Please tell her to come back, he said. When I looked at James, he answered the phone. James humbly requested Ethan. Ileana is not fully recovered yet. Please let her rest for another week. Ethan told James over the phone. I guess there's no choice. Just one more week, okay? And then hung up. I protested to James. But she needs at least three more weeks to recover. And we don't know what they'll do to her if she goes back. James reassured me, don't worry. We won't stick to the one-week timeline. They treated her terribly, and we have a plan. He then asked Ileana, What do you want to do? If you want to try again with Ethan, we won't stop you. But if you want to leave him, we'll support you. Ileana suddenly resolute said, I've been thinking, am I really as useless as Ivy and Ethan say? But this isn't right. They're just taking my money. I don't want this anymore. I want a divorce, Ileana declared. James encouraged her, saying, that's right. You've chosen your path. We'll always be on your side. James shared the information he had gathered with us. We prepared for the possibility of Ethan coming over, ready to handle the situation. One week passed, and we didn't contact Ethan. Nine days later, Ethan and Ivy came to visit. When the doorbell rang, I checked the intercom and informed Ilana and James. James suggested, let's talk to them directly and settle this. Elana nodded in agreement. Opening the door, we found Ethan and Ivy glaring at us. Calming myself, I greeted them warmly. Hello. What brings you here so suddenly? Ethan demanded. Why hasn't Elana returned home? It's been a week. You did tell her, right? Ivy also chimed in. That's right. You can't do your chores, you can't do your laundry, and you can't even keep your promise to come home. What a mess you are. Parents and children are helpless. I invited them in, saying, Let's not talk in the doorway. Please come inside. Reluctantly, they entered. Ilana told them firmly, I won't return to that house, Ethan. Please, let's divorce. I can't live with you anymore. Ethan threatened loudly. You think you can just decide that? But Ilana stood her ground, facing Ethan with resolve. Ivy then berated Ilana for six months. I did all the housework and supported Ethan, while you neglected your duties. Elana told Ivy, It's not that I didn't do the chores. Whenever I did, you would criticize my methods and take over the tasks, didn't you? Ivy retorted, How dare you speak to me like that? After making me work so hard, you should be ashamed. Ethan joined in, That's right. My mother helped because you couldn't handle the chores, allowing you to focus on work. That's when James shouted at them. What nonsense! You took Alana's salary and fed her only bread ends. Your actions are the worst kind of abuse. They were shocked by James' outburst. James added, Ethan, you have been fired from your company. I checked out your employment status. You don't have the power to continue paying the rent on that apartment anymore, do you? Ethan began to look uneasy. Alana added, I didn't know until Dad told me. James continued, I hired a detective to find out. Ethan, you were fired six months ago for an affair with your boss's wife. 
Elanon accused Ethan, you pushed me to work because you lost your job and income. Ethan turned pale and hung his head. James then confronted Ivy. You have a shopping addiction, and that's right. You didn't leave your home due to a fight, but because you were divorced and had nowhere to go. Ivy lost her composure and turned pale. James concluded, Ethan is being sued for alimony, and Ivy is being chased by debt collectors. They were trying to pass their debts onto Ilana. Trembling with anger, Ilana placed a piece of paper on the desk, saying, Once and for all, let's divorce. I filled out half of the divorce form. You complete it and submit it to the authorities. We'll communicate through lawyers from now on. Ethan prostrated at Alana's feet on the carpet, pleading, Please don't say we should divorce. It was just a moment of madness. I was wrong to hide it from you. You're all I have, Alana. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me, Ethan pleaded, his voice filled with regret. Ivy, also appealing to Alana, cried, I did all the housework and took care of everything, didn't I? I'm sorry. Please come back. I'll keep doing the chores. Alana, looking at Ethan and Ivy coldly, said, I'm fed up. Who would want to start over with you two? You hid what you did and exploited my salary. I don't want to see your faces. Ethan and Ivy were unable to move from their spot, crying inconsolably. James sternly told him, The conversation is over. It's time for you to leave. If you don't, we have our ways to deal with it. Reluctantly, Ethan and Ivy stood up and left our home, defeated. Afterward, with a lawyer's help, Ilana and Ethan officially divorced. Of course, we filed for alimony from Ethan. In addition to hiding his affair, we'd also added the fact that Ethan did not provide adequate meals to Ilana in the alimony claim. We had a doctor's diagnosis which served as conclusive evidence against Ethan. Ethan had to move out of the apartment and live in a cheaper one with Ivy. Now he works day and night to pay the alimony to Ilana, and Ivy, not working, has become the target of Ethan's anger, and they constantly fight. Our lawyer informed us about Ethan and Ivy's current situation. Ilana fully recovered and returned to work. She seems to be enjoying her work more than ever. She apologized to me and James, saying, I'm sorry for being a burden and coming back home. Thank you for all your help with the divorce. I'll be staying here for a while. I hugged her, saying, Divorce doesn't matter. The fact that you're alive and well is all that matters to us. James added, Don't overdo it. You're a hard worker, and sometimes you keep things to yourself too much. Elana admitted, I should have talked to you both sooner. I tried to handle too much on my own. Seeing Alana's smile return was truly heartwarming. James, who stood by us and fought against Ethan and Ivy, proved to be incredibly reliable. I fell for him all over again. When I told him, he joked, then how about showing your gratitude with food? Make my favorite pork cutlets tonight as a family. We've overcome difficulties and will surely face more in the future but with James and Alana by my side. I want to support each other as a family.